Hi friends, my name is Ravi Roth and I'm your host of the Gaycation Travel Show. And today we're going to Orlando, Florida. I've been to Orlando for gay days and I went with my high school marching band, but I've never really been to explore the queer culture that exists in Orlando. I'm also linking up with Rachel Covello from Outcoast, Florida, who's going to take me on a surprise day trip to a little cute town 45 minutes away. I need to go pack my tank tops. I'll see you in Orlando. I just arrived in Orlando. Now it's time to figure out where I'm staying. And it's Sunday, so it's Sunday fun day. Hello, it's time for brunch and some gay bars. There are many housing options in Orlando. If you're looking for something super fun near Universal Studios that won't break the bank, check out Lowe's Royal Pacific Resort. If you're looking for something a little more queer, check out the newest company Fab Stays, which is an LGBTQ focused Airbnb style option. For an amazing local brunch, go to Menagerie with live music and eye candy for days. Now I'm meeting up with my friend Derek, who will take me all around downtown Orlando. Derek is my local guide here in Orlando. And Derek's taking me around and showing me all of the unconventional things you can dearie, um, other than going to Magic Kingdom or um, Typhoon Lagoon. Yes. How do you meet people here? Grinder or scruff or in real life? Um, <laughs> Grinder and um, no scruff, but real life bars. What's a tip that you would give a queer person visiting Orlando? Start with downtown first, don't go to the parks first. And what do you recommend doing downtown? Lake Eola, everything by Lake Eola, day drinking, um, kayaking, tons of fun stuff to do. Everything's outdoorsy here. Um, yeah. Where is the best Instagrammable photo spot? Mm, Lake Eola, that is the rainbow little amphitheater. Yes. And what kind of animals are in that lake? Oh, swans. Lots of swans. There's black swans, there's white swans. Um, there's ducks, there's turtles. <laughs> I love that. Yes. What's a myth here about Orlando? Well, it's not, I mean, I get it. There, there's a big part of it that is Disney here. I get it. But there's so much more that you can do that's fun and like exciting and it's all what you need. Hey! Yeah, Orlando. <laughs> First three words that come to mind when I say Orlando, go. Love, Di fun, diversity, absolute fun. Diversity. City, beautiful. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Home. While there is no official gayborhood in Orlando, our first stop will be Lake Eola, located in Thornton Park, one of the social hubs of downtown Orlando. So this is Lake Eola, uh, center of downtown Orlando, I guess you could say. Very gay, fun area. Um, known for its swans in this lake, as you see over there. What's up, swans? Swan party. <laughs> Don't bite my butt. Grinder or scruff? Grinder. <laughs> favorite <laughs> favorite queer bar? Oh gosh, uh, District Dive. Universal or Magic Kingdom? Universal. Okay. Universal all the way. We can't go to Orlando without hitting up a major park, and Derek said that Universal was the one to feature. Vacation and takes over with Alcos Universal. A dear friend and queer travel guru, Rachel Covello, who runs Outcoast Florida, is taking me on a surprise trip to her favorite town an hour outside of Orlando. We are headed to Mount Dora. Florida. Dora the Explorer. Adora <laughs> we, we call the town Ad Mount Adorable. Mount Dora is full of queer owned businesses, novelty shops, bookstores, street art, and last but not least, amazing people. Let's go find out what lights up the humans of Mount Dora. Welcome to my favorite town, Mount Dora, Florida. 
Um, as you can see behind me, it's a cute little downtown area we're gonna explore today. But what's great about Mount Dora is it's about 45 minutes north of Orlando. So if you're coming to Orlando to enjoy Disney and Universal Studios and want to take a day trip to a cute little town, this is a perfect place to visit. You still fly into Orlando and head up to Mount Dora. Rachel introduced me to Janet and Linda, two locals from Mount Dora who run Spouses with Houses, a lesbian-run real estate business. Tell everyone the exciting job that you have. Oh, we, we decided to open up our own real estate brokerage and it's called Spouses with Houses. Not 100% of everybody picks up on the whole concept right away. We've been approached by a couple times where people said, oh, do you girls leave your husbands at home? Are you sisters? <laughs> yeah, we always hear it takes sisters. Yeah, we look so much alike. <laughs> But no, but we are sisters. <laughs> yeah. From another mama. Okay, when I say Mount Dora, first three words that come to mind go. Adorable. Uh, <laughs> my word. <laughs> um, e eclectic. Adorable. Fun. And fantastic. I mean, it's Friendly. the energy level here is phenomenal. You will not meet a stranger. You'll be greeted with a hello, how you doing? You walking down the street, it's just amazing. You have to go on a round of um, bars and restaurants. We've got mm. so much ethnic. Um, we've got the Magical Meat Boutique. We've got Indian. We've got, um, we've got such a variety. Of we, we've got um, Cuban. We've got Italian. We've got German. We got everything. So, and we actually do a tour of all the tastings. Yeah, there, there's okay. yeah, there's someone in town that does um, Taste of Mount Dora, I believe it's called. Yes. <laughs> we have our museum. Oh. Yes. Which, which is David, David Bowie. Bowie's private collection of Memphis-style furniture. We are now venturing into the cutest little Christmas shop that's queer-owned and open all year round with the campiest tchotchkes and ornaments. So first we're visiting the North Pole, which is over here. And then we are going to take him in a special room where his mask will fit right in. So we are in the holiday shop in Mount Dora. The owner happens to be part of our LGBT community and has created a little private party <laughs> for all of our viewing pleasure. I'm here with Nick Lawrence today, owner of the Holiday Shop in Mount Dora, and your store is amazing. But how has the community embraced having a store that is obviously out and proud as an LGBT-owned business or an LGBT supporter? I mean, you can see the rainbows in this room. We, we've received a lot of community support, not just uh, you know the residents, but the business community here as well. Um, they've been behind us 100% of the way. Three words that come to mind when I say Mount Dora, go. Um, I would say Old Town, um, uh, great community, um, and, and, and just a wonderful place to visit. So I love to shop. So the next place we're going is Papilo. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. The cellar door. And this is also an LGBT owned business right here in Mount Dora. You guys, what do you guys want to try today? I I'm a Pinot person. All right, well, I can pour you a little Pinot Grigio if you'd like. Would love to. That so what do you like to Yeah, I feel more. like we should just, you know, go through the gamut. This yeah, is well, one this of is two so nice. owners of Papilio. That's right. Helio. You got it right. Most people don't. Now, is it? You, did you come up with the name? Uh, we came up with the name because it means butterfly in Latin, and my business partner makes artwork with uh, real butterflies, so that's where it all comes from. Okay, so Henry, my yes. question for you. Okay. So you are an out and proud gay man living here in Mount Dora. The Correct. Yes. I always want to say Dora the Explorer. <laughs> um, what's it like meeting other gay men here? Sure. Is it um, like an apps? Is it in person? Is it like a fairly open place? Like what's the vibe yeah, for so you? So I moved here from Key West. So obviously I was used to it being super gay. Um, and so coming to Mount Dora at first was a little bit like, okay, this is gonna be a little bit different uh -huh. uh, or a lot different from Key West. But actually I was really pleasantly surprised because there is um, quite a large gay community here uh, in Mount Dora. When I say Mount Dora, three words yes. that come to mind go. Uh, quaint, charming, uh, fun. Oh, really? gosh, I was gonna say those three same words. Uh, uh, historic, um, haunted, uh, and uh, um, uh, exciting, actually, strangely it enough, for this, little, for this little town. So we are heading into Barrel of Books and Games. It's owned by, finally, a lesbian. 
Um, Finally. <laughs> we're gonna walk in. Chrissy's the owner, and I'm gonna see if she has any LGBT books here. So let's figure it out. Uh, so you own a bookstore. I do. Do you feel like? Uh, first of all, I think it's great. But every time I see a bookstore, I get super excited because I feel like they're so few and far between anymore. True. So what do you do to keep this alive? Customer service. Yeah. I am super, yeah. My customers at this point, so we've been open for nine years, and literally they just come in and they're like, I need a book. <laughs> and I hand them a book, and they know that I'm going to hand them a book that they will love. What is this? <laughs> this? is the Van Gogh house right here in Mount Dora. I understand that this wall here was painted because apparently the kid that lives here is autistic. So his parents thought I'll do a nice thing and I'll paint this, this wall blue in Van Gogh so the kid be able to find the house. Well, the city didn't like that. So the city tried to push back and what came down to is that the wall had to match the house. So instead of painting the wall back to the house color, they painted the entire house like Van Gogh, right? That's so, so cool. So we have Van Gogh house right here. Van Gogh House, what's up? Hello, welcome. All right, Linda, right here. I love how cute and artsy this town is. Oh, yeah, this totally. Is probably one of my favorite murals, so can you tell us a little bit about the mural? So, yeah, so the, the town has all these artists, and so they actually did a um, contest, and people entered and with a display of what they wanted to um, paint. So throughout our areas, the dumpsters, the walls, they create different art, and this one is pretty cool. Taking a day trip to Mount Dora has been so fun, eclectic, um, and so queer. Like this town in the middle of a red state is super inclusive and super queer and so friendly. I mean, this mural behind me with the nicest queens in town. Um, it's really true. You do meet the nicest people here. I've been here for literally six hours, not even like three hours, but I'm gonna say six hours because like I wanted to be here longer. And we found an amazing cafe, we found amazing restaurants, we found murals, um, cute stores, and uh, it's just been an, an amazing time. So come to Orlando, get out of your comfort zone, go to Mount Dora, go to a theme park if you want, but there's much more to do outside of the theme parks if you're visiting Orlando. The most popular way to get around is by car, but there are taxi services, buses, and all the popular rideshare programs available to you as well. To get to Mount Dora, you're definitely gonna need a car, but once there, you can get a bike, you can walk, it's an adorable little town. As Rachel and I head back to Orlando, I wanna let you know that there are so many outdoor activities that make up this fabulous city. From boat tours, to alligator parks, to nature, adventure, there is something for everyone here. Make sure you pack some extra sunscreen, tank tops, swim trunks, and sneakers for walking around downtown as well as the parks. If you are into the queer bar culture, check out Island Time, which has amazing Caribbean Southern food and great cocktails. Broken Cage for a low-key time or date night with a speakeasy in the back, and Ember to dance the night away and celebrate life with the queer community. I can't leave Orlando without stopping by Pulse nightclub to pay homage to my queer brothers and sisters. On June 12, 2016, a man came into this queer nightclub and killed 49 people and wounded 53 more in the deadliest attack against LGBTQ people in the United States. The tribute here from humans across the world is heartbreakingly beautiful. And I was not ready for these emotions to take over my entire body. <laughs> it's shown the world that there's so much love here in Florida. <laughs> the pulse of the city is not, it's not dead and it's not gone. And it's just stronger because of it. <laughs> Orlando, you have so much heart. Going to Pulse nightclub completely wrecked me, but the night of the massacre completely wrecked everyone around the world. But we all stood for something that day. 
no more hate, no more violence in the queer community. And yes, we have a lot more work to do to protect all of the lives of everyone in the LGBTQIA community. The people in Orlando were so kind and so caring and so giving. Gay, straight, didn't matter. The queer nightlife was so fun. <laughs> Going to Universal Studios, I was squealing like a little piggy because I'm afraid of heights. And Rachel Cavello, thank you so much for taking me to the surprise little day trip to Mount Dora. It was the cutest, quaintest little town. Be sure to follow Rachel on her channel, Outcoast Florida, as she continues to spread love, positivity, and give amazing insights on the queer culture in Florida. Next week, we're bringing it back to my city, and we're going to the Brooklyn! <laughs> Be sure to follow the Gaycation Travel Show each week as we dive in, tanked up first, obviously, and show you some known and off the beaten path destinations that should be on your travel bucket list. Stay safe, stay proud, and always remember to live out loud. <laughs> <laughs>